What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. We're talking about two topics here today. We'll be talking about Scream and we'll be talking about Dog Soldiers. Now, I'm going to start it off with Scream. Scream, the creator, Kevin Williamson, praised the decision recently on a podcast, Happy Horror Time, uh, or Happy Horror Time. Shout out to that podcast. I'll leave a link to the episode in the description. It's rather interesting, actually. I think at one point I've been told he discusses the original plans of i know what you did last summer or the car scene in scream 2 between sydney and hallie and ghostface would have been originally in i know what you did last summer so i'll leave a link to this podcast episode down in the description but on this podcast he was asked well, how he felt about the death of dewey riley under the creative team he also went on talking about how it feels good to not be writing these new movies but he said he would have ultimately killed dewey he also referenced Randy. He said while he probably would have kept Randy alive if he would have known the series would have kept going on, he still ultimately would have killed Dewey and Randy because you have to be able to go there. You have to be able to have stakes, make the movie feel, ha have that sense of danger in your movie. And this is a comment I loved hearing from him because, again, I know there are those comments out there. Many of you, like me, have seen them. And shout out to you, Chad Meeks, for sending this my way. But these comments that will implore you and they're adamant that Wes would not have killed any of the OG3. Kevin would not have killed any of the OG3. I mean if I'm being quite honest looking at who wrote those first two movies and who wrote the fourth one for the vast majority if Kevin was going to kill any one of the three I would be inclined to believe he was always going to kill Dewey Riley. Dewey Riley out of the three was always the one having those close calls. Of course, arguably in Screen 4, it's both him and Gale. Well, more so Gale definitely in, in Screen 4. But if I'm just going off of those first two movies, Kevin Williamson, I could argue, had, had a plan to ultimately kill Dewey Riley at some point in this series. He actually made it pr pretty clear that's what he would have done if he were, I guess, able to complete his Screen 4 trilogy. Keep in mind, Screen 6, his Screen 6, would have centered on Dewey and Gale in some capacity. I, I believe he's also referenced the fact that Sydney still would have been there. But I can only imagine with a confession like this in this podcast, where we would have seen him kill Dewey Riley would have been in his version of what Scream 6 could have been. Which to me, that's like a sigh of relief. It feels good to hear that from him because it's like, okay, again, that's one other half of the dynamic duo between Wes and Kevin who are not against killing legacy characters i think just like me and many other people who have been trying to make this claim when listening to the commentary tracks watching the interviews of these men it's not that they would be against killing legacy stars as much as it was wes even admitted this about screen four there was some debate about it i think courtney of course also came out saying she had asked to be killed off in screen four but there was some debate about killing one of the legacy stars in screen four and this is from an old IGN interview from like 2010, 2011. And Wes actually admits the only reason it didn't happen was because of Bob Weinstein. Ultimately, that's something Bob didn't want to do. So the producers, of course, stepped in, overruled them, and we didn't get a death of a legacy character in Screen 4. Now, if I were a betting man, I would probably have think that, yes, they would have killed Gale in Screen 4. Out of the three, in terms of what we got on screen for them, it would have been Gale that got killed. That's the safe assumption. It could have been any of them, but I think it would have been Gale. Now, with Kevin saying he would have ultimately killed Screen or would have killed Dewey, I can only assume it would have taken place in his version of Scream 6 because that version of Scream 6 would have included a story centered on Gale and Dewey. Those are his own words from when he went over his plans, ideally, for Scream 5 and 6, the films that never were, that would have been sequels to his version of Scream 4, if Jill had gotten away with it, gone away to college, I'm assuming she would have been caught and busted in 5, and you would have a completely different story in Scream 6 that still would not have been about Sidney Prescott because it would have been about Dewey and Gale at the center of it. Probably more so to do with Gale. It's been a while since I looked at that recent interview. But I enjoyed seeing these comments from him because, again, it just lets me know that these are men and just writers and creators of horror in general who are not against killing legacy stars. What they probably are against is the same thing that I am against. I'm against killing legacy stars and then maybe not having their deaths be meaningful in any capacity not having it do anything to push the narrative forward similar to how i could argue rachel's death even though at the time she was not a legacy star but how they treat rachel in halloween 5 
that's very anticlimactic. Her death, it does nothing to push the narrative forward because her death is mostly unknown for a lot of the movie after she's killed. It just feels like a throwaway death. It's not something that 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 I feel is respectful to the character. Now, you could argue again. I understand a lot of you do not like the execution of Dewey Riley's death. However, I don't really see that much of an issue with the execution. I will also admit that Kevin did not say that he agreed with the execution. That is something I can admit. He doesn't say that, but he does agree at least with the decision to kill Dewey because he ultimately would have done the same thing at some point in one of his movies. That's a very big bombshell, very big bombshell. And of course, the acknowledgement of the fact that he would have kept Randy alive. I've argued that maybe they should have kept Randy alive so they could have someone to kill in Scream 3 because Scream 3 is going on about how anyone, including the main character, can die. No one really... Of too much significance died other than jennifer jolie who was a very well written supporting character but i digress jumping into dog soldiers 2 dog soldiers 2 is still a work in progress according to neil marshall who directed the beloved cult classic werewolf film from 2002 i want to retrace everything we've been finding out since 2020 and work my way up to the latest bit of news before giving my thoughts now back in 2020 while speaking to den of geek Marshall provided this update on the sequel that was originally announced as dead in 2015 on the commentary of like a re-release of the movie from Shout Factory, I believe. He said there's more of a chance now than ever before. There's things in the works and we're seeing what we can do. Certainly myself and Kevin McKidd and Dog Soldiers producer Chris Figg are up for it to revisit this world. Over the past 18 years, the question I get asked pretty much more than anything else is when are we going to get Dog Soldiers 2? Part of me thinks I'd like to go back and revisit that world somehow. And if Kev's up for it, then that would make it worthwhile for sure. So we'll see. You never know. Kevin McKidd, who starred as Cooper, said this about the sequel during that same interview. He said it's just verbal between him and me at this point. I think it could be fun again to revisit that character 18 years later or 18 years on. We keep throwing around ideas of Cooper and the mental institution and he's been locked up because he spent 18 years screaming and shouting that there are werewolves in the woods. And sure enough, they come back one day and the marshals come and knock on his cell door and say, we need your help. Now, in 2021, while speaking with Bloody Disgusting, Neil Marshall said these comments on Dog Soldier 2. Dog Soldiers was always intended to be a trilogy, so the rights for that have been tied up for quite some time, but now there's a possibility of a Dog Soldiers 2. Finally, the initial rumblings are happening, so that's looking semi-likely. We'll see. Now, recently this year, in July, Marshall revealed during an interview with Any Good Films that he was hoping to announce the film last year for the 20th anniversary of the original. It would appear that for the past six years in an attempt to secure a production deal with the rights holders and lawyers has been a pit been a bit challenging so that is what has been in the works with dog soldiers 2 over the past six years according to marshall himself an attempt to secure a production deal with the right holders and the lawyers i guess representing said rights holders he doesn't know what's what's taking so long but he's been told it's going good and it's going to happen here are some of the other recent comments on dog soldiers 2 from also this past july when being interviewed by film hound magazine also from neil marshall he said, well, if the lawyers get their fingers out, a sequel to Dog Soldiers is the plan. We're literally just waiting on lawyers right now to figure out the right situation. I'm keen to get all of that story sorted. I just want to get the green light so I can start writing it. He's not going to start writing it, apparently, until all of that is sorted. And he knows officially 100 percent it's going to be happening because he does not want to waste his time. He said, but I cannot do that until these lawyers get their fingers out. It's taken us several years to get us this far. And yeah, we're kind of close. I'll do some kind of announcement when I can finally start writing. It's a tough one, though, because it's kind of a double edged sword. If I have a dollar for every time somebody asks me if I would do dog soldiers, too, I could probably finance the film myself. But, you know. It's great that fans out there want it so much. I better do a bloody good job of it, though, because if it's not good, they won't thank me for it. I want to do it for everybody and myself. But my God, I better make it good. Now, I can say as someone who's seen, yes, Hellboy, the recent Hellboy and some of his other projects, I can admit, yes, there's been a decline, a dip in his quality of filmmaking in terms of being a director. So maybe we should have another director at the helm. But him writing the movie, I don't think would be all that bad. If he has the right inspiration in mind for where he wants to see a sequel expand on this world building that was set up in a way in that original movie. So that's the latest on Dog Soldiers 2. Those recent comments from July. And I can only assume the planned story that they have referenced, Neil Marshall that being, 
The planned story that he's acknowledged exists, I can only assume it still includes Cooper's return in some capacity, whether it be lead, cold lead, I don't really care as long as it's a well written story overall. I think what I would prefer to see is a new group of characters who encounter more of these werewolves in a different country, maybe like Canada, maybe it's in the States. Keep in mind the goal of the original in terms of the mission going on in that original was to use the team that was present as bait so that they could capture one so it could be studied and weaponized. Now I'd explore that a little bit further in a sequel. The end of the film shows us a newspaper clipping of Cooper making claims about werewolves existence. So why don't we set this sequel 20 something years later and reintroduce this world by not focusing on Cooper because it's been a little while and many people aren't going to know who Cooper is, but just reintroduce us into the world of dog soldiers by expanding on that initial goal of the plan to hunt and track down and capture one of those werewolves have us in a world where the existence of werewolves is known several countries including the u.s have weaponized these people by allowing them into the armed forces netflix actually has an episode of love death and robots titled shapeshifters that seems like an appropriate next step for a modern day dog soldier sequel give us a story on a group of soldiers and some of them are werewolves that have learned to manipulate their own transformations like similar to how oz learned how to do it in buffy the vampire slayer for my buffy fans out there but you can set it on a pair of dog soldiers who are actually weaponized they're in the armed forces and they have been trained on how to manipulate their own transformations they're honed they're honed in on their skills since they are of course part wolf and you could have a sequel focusing on how their comrades receive them how they are looked as being part of the armed forces maybe they don't agree with them being here and again some of these werewolves they've just learned how to manipulate their own transformations and what you could do is have tension between soldiers who are not werewolves and the ones that are the conflict can be some type of rival country who has also weaponized werewolves and thus this is where our basis for soldiers versus versus werewolves can come in an ally can be taken behind enemy lines and the film can go from there hell you can do something like this do an entire movie on these weaponized soldiers who are werewolves who have trained themselves on when to be able to transform or not they don't just immediately transform due to the full moon because of their military training and the way the military has helped them hone in on their half selves to be able to manipulate when they do and don't transform they're in full control of it now have them go up against a team have them be in a team and have them go out into some confined location and hunt down other werewolves that are basically not willing to comply with the request of them from their countries if in the case of they wanted them to be a part of the armed forces but these people would rather be a detriment to society they go around terrorizing the community and so you have actual dog soldiers versus werewolves who want nothing more than to be destructive in society that sounds like a pr pretty simple straightforward basis and could be effective sequel to dog soldiers let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification and there's a video in the description i'll have links to my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know if there's any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video